The Wooden Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. So if you've got school-aged children this year, chances are you're looking at a little bit of home remote learning, at least for a couple of weeks. I know we are. We've got two weeks, and then we'll see what happens after that. Uh, so we needed to create an environment for the kids that was a little bit more school-like. The problem is, at home, it's very difficult to get them to make that transition and actually get their work done. So Nicole asked me if I could build a couple of desks. The thing is, I don't know how long we're going to need these desks for, so I didn't build them like one of my regular pieces of furniture. These are actually built to be a temporary solution, and if we have to trash them after a few months because they're going back to in-person classes, I'm actually okay with that. So what I have here are two designs. One is basically built with a circular saw, chop saw, and a drill. And the other one I use the table saw for a little bit more fancy joinery, but they're very similar. Uh, both of them are made from a half a sheet of plywood and a two by four, right? So very inexpensive and you can crank this out in a single day. Let's get to it. I usually like to cut plywood down on the floor. I use foam insulation boards as a sacrificial surface. First, cut the sheet in half. Whoopsie. Next, cut the 16 inch wide strip. That one gets cut in half to make the top and the bottom of our box. Now cut the box sides and back support stretcher. Reference the cut diagram in the plan for all the details. Cross cut the two box sides to length. They should be about 16 inches, but it's best to hold them against the top and bottom pieces to make sure that they match up. Cut the support stretcher too while you're here, just keep it a little bit oversized in length. So let's construct a box. Really nothing fancy here, just glue and brad nails. I'm using 1 inch 18 gauge brads. Now if you have a lot of experience with a brad nailer, you might notice that sometimes the nails just bloop go out the side and there's a good way to avoid that. If you look really close at the brad nail itself, you're going to see little tiny bevels on two sides. That bevel means it can slip in either one of those directions. But in the other orientation, perpendicular, it's usually going to fire true. So this is why I'm not firing like this because the brad nails could go out this way or out that way and then we've got a blowout. I go this way. Now if it sways one way or the other, it's still within that half inch piece. It won't sway this way. Now cut the 2x4 into two 24 inch pieces and two 16 inch pieces. Those will make up our legs. If you're making the joinery version of the desk, you might consider giving these pieces a little bit of cleanup action with the jointer, planer, and table saw. It's kind of hard to cut good joinery into something that isn't flat and square. The basic version doesn't need any further milling, but it's not a bad idea to clean up the faces with a little bit of sanding. Now let's connect the vertical leg to the foot. I'll countersink for screws and locate the leg 8 inches back from the front edge of the foot. Make sure these pieces are square to one another. If you don't, the desk might very well wobble. When you're done, the two leg assemblies should be mirror images of one another. Using the box as a spacer, flush with the top of the leg, attach a small support block. If you're having trouble with the pieces sliding around on you, try making your screws protrude just a little bit. When you put the piece in place, press down, and that should help it lock in place while you drive the screws. Another good way to get the perfect position is with a clamp. Finally, we can attach the box to the legs. The overhang of the box should match the overhang of the foot. You could drive screws from the outside, but with this half inch material, I'm kind of afraid I'm going to punch through before I even get a good grip on that plywood, so I'll drive some short screws from the inside into the leg. What's with the little Christmas thing around your neck? I'm going to bring it to the pool. It's August though. How come you got a Christmas, what is that, a cat? Look, with a hat. That's awesome. So I have to go to the pool now. Oh, okay. But it's going to close soon. Oh, you better go. You better go. To further stabilize the structure, we'll drop in a support stretcher just under the top. Use the base itself to get the measurement and cut to length. Now we can just glue and brad nail into place. Pretty much everything gets an eighth inch round over. Since this is plywood, I'm really careful to smooth every edge to help avoid splinters. And that's it for the basic version. If you're making the joinery version, get ready for some half laps. Measure and locate the half lap on the foot. At the table saw, use two stops and a miter gauge to start making the half lap. Adjust the height of the dado stack as you go until it's about halfway through the thickness. 
I'm usually pretty conservative with my stop locations so that I could widen them slightly until I get the right fit. Now for the complementary half lap in the leg. Insert the leg into the half lap we just made and draw a line for the shoulder. Using the fence as a stop, we can start making the cuts. It's a good idea to lower the blade just a little bit so that you can sneak up on the perfect fit. To avoid using support blocks on this piece, we're going to make a notch at the top of the legs. The blade height here isn't critical, just go about halfway through the thickness. Finally, we need a notch for the support stretcher. Put your legs together with the half laps facing one another and mark the location of the notch on both legs. Bring the height of the blade to the thickness of your plywood and use the two stops to create the notch. Time for the glue up, starting with the leg and the foot. It's super important that you glue the foot on the right way. The short side of the foot should be on the same side as the stretcher notch. Glue and a clamp is really all we need here. While the leg assembly is flat, go ahead and add some of those eighth inch roundovers. Once the leg assemblies are done, double check that they're mirror images. To attach the legs, turn everything upside down and drop the leg onto the box in the proper front to back location. If you don't have a clamp that's big enough for this job, you can always shoot a couple of brads in there to hold it in place while you add the screws. I just waited for the glue to set up and then added a couple of screws, being super careful about the length. I really don't want to punch through that plywood, though I probably should have done what I did on the previous one, drilling in from the inside. Now we'll fit the support stretcher, cut it to length, and then glue and brad nail it in place. And once again, sand and smooth everything. Of course, you could finish or paint your desk however you like. Only thing left to do is to take a good picture for a video thumbnail, which is a lot harder than it should be. Come on, just get all of the So hopefully that provides you with a low cost, reasonable solution to get some desks in your home for your kids. Uh, and if you don't have kids, maybe ask around because there's probably a family who could really use some of these and maybe they don't have the resources, tools, or materials to build something like this and it's so inexpensive and quick to make. Um, it'd be a great thing to make for other people. And right now I think we could use a little bit of uh, community love. <laughs> We need more of that. All right, so thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck with your build. Good luck getting through these very, very weird times.